Hello, so today I thought we'd just have a little bit of a quick play with some infusions and these are from Paper Artsy um, this is Black Knight and I thought we'd we'd try a few different things I've got some normal printer paper it's a little bit thicker than you would normally use uh, in your printer um, I, I think it's about 160 something like that 160 180 it's just got a little bit more weight so things don't saturate water doesn't saturate through quite as quickly um, I've decided to go for white as a base I've been working a lot on craft but I thought I'd try some white for a change so we'll get going and we'll just have a play and see what happens um, as you know I like to use gesso quite a lot in my work it acts as a resist and you can get some interesting patterns um, and some interesting effects. So I'm going to, I've got my trusty little brayer here and it's quite coated in paint but it doesn't matter and some PBO gesso which I'm just going to put onto my glass mat. It's just about at the end so it's making awful noises. Let's get rid of that little bit just so I don't get it on my arms. So I've got my paper, I'm just going to bray out the gesso onto my glass mat and then just randomly roll it across my paper. Now I, w I know that you won't see this because it's white on white. I seem to have already got a little bit of the infusions. It's possibly on my brayer from the last time I used it. I'll do a little bit of sort of the skipping technique, as I set that to calls it. I'm coming a little bit from the edges because I like the edges to be have gesso on them. Right, I've got a spare piece of card because this was A4 paper and I've just ripped it in half so that it'll be easier for you to see. So I'll just roll any spare brayer, any spare gesso off on the side and that'll pick it up on the other side from the glass mat so that you get some gesso on there. It dries fairly quick does this gesso but I'll give it a quick blast. does curl a little bit but I don't mind I always straighten them out later uh, so I've got my black knight infusions I'll give it a quick shake up just so it mixes the particles because there's walnut ink particles in here as well as um, pigment particles and then I'm just going to sprinkle it on I'm putting quite a lot because I will get a quite intense reaction it's uh, very very pigmented so you get a lot of reaction for not a lot of powder so this will be quite as you can see quite intense I'm going to keep going so there's quite a lot of water on here quite pretty. Just pick it up and move it a little. And at any stage you can stop and dry it. Which I think that'll about do. I've got my piece of scrap here, so what I'm going to do is place it on the top and press it down. So we'll get a two for one. There we are. You 
can see it's got a lovely blue hue to it. I'll do that again. And again. I don't mind if I get it on the back of the paper. That's fine. There we are. I'll set that to one side. So we get a two for one really. Now I don't quite like these lines really. So I've got a little bit of a, a sponge. So I'm just going to get rid of the lines but also move some of the spare ink to the edges so if I've got areas where there isn't much colour I can get the the walnut ink mainly which is the the second colour to um, dilute I can get that to the edge and I don't know if you can see if you do it with a sponge you don't get a a dead straight line so that's one piece this is the one that we added the roll off really where we used the excess gesso and as you can see that is completely different but just as nice some of the lines are still there but if I do more effects on the top that won't matter. This is more of a overall quite a subtle sort of effect. So I'll just quickly dry it a little bit. I'm just going to get rid of these excess crystals around the edge. Normally I would dab them up with another piece of paper but as soon as we're filming we'll just get rid of those. So, there you are, you can see you've got a lovely, the starts of a lovely background there with white areas and the walnut ink which has dissolved, all the other colours of the um, pigments that are in the Black Knight but it's a nice soft blue really. Um, so I'll set the adder aside to dry completely and I think we'll work on this one a little bit more. Just give it a quick blast again. I don't want it to be completely dry because um, it is permanent once it's dry. But if it isn't completely dry and there's some little particles which aren't dissolved, when I add some more gesso I will get some more interesting effects. There might still be some particles on here. This is when I used rusty car, so they might transfer as well. So I'm going to use, if there's any left in my gesso, a little bit more gesso. My roller tends to come apart, it's very old. Roll it out on my grass, glass mat again. This gives me sort of a better effect. It, it, corals on the roller and you don't get as much sort of intense complete blocks of white gesso. You do in some areas. I don't mind that. I quite like some dense areas and some a little bit softer. I'm trying not to get any lines this spray is quite old and it has got quite a lot of paint on it so I do sometimes get lines in it and I like linear effects but I don't always want them so there we are so we've just get the edge get a bit more in there that's it yes I quite like that as a background So I could choose which area I wanted to choose, use. Um, I could just cut little strips, tear little strips to use in clusters, all sorts of things. I could even fold it in half and have it a page in a, um, a scrap journal. Um, so I'll dry that again so that maybe you can see. There you, are, you can see that because the infusions wasn't completely dry 
it's actually picking up in the gesso. The moisture in the gesso is activating it. So that's really quite a nice background. It's number one. And this is the other one. So I'll pause the video. I'll decide what I'm going to do next and then we'll continue adding things to these to make nice backgrounds. Right, so we're back. These are completely dry now. They've had quite a long time to dry. Uh, as you can see, the first sheet goes right to the edge. I'm quite fond of that. It's got areas that I love, but it's got some areas that I think, yeah, it just needs a bit more work. This one I absolutely love. This was the one that we pressed onto the top of that one. Um, this lovely texture, visual texture area here, I absolutely adore. Uh, but it needs a little bit of something. Maybe just to frame it, um, I might use part of it, so it just needs a bit of something here. But I'm going to work on this one first, because it needs a lot more work. I've got my trusty brayer still. I've got some Deco Art Media Heavy Gel Medium. Uh, it is gloss, so it will add a little bit of shine whatever we do. I'm going to get a little bit of this, just about this much, maybe not that much, and put it on my glass mat. Just spread it about with a spatula. I'm then going to get my infusions, the Black Knight again because it'll tie in with this and I'm going to sprinkle a little bit into the gloss gel into the gel medium and work it in and you can probably see hopefully if on the video that it's going a nice dark not quite indigo but a nice dark blue all the particles are dissolving in there the walnut ink everything else is dissolving nicely. I'm going to spread it about a little bit on my glass mat because I don't want a big blob on my page. This is what's on the edge of the um, palette knife scraper so I'm just going to get rid of that and put that immediately into water because the gel medium will stick to it quite drastically. And I'm going to pick it up on my brayer, again as I did before, and go over again. And this adds a nice bit of depth. I do know that I've covered up some areas that I loved before but it's giving it depth and a bit more oomph and it is after all just a background it isn't the main focus it's going to be just a nice background for a small journal page as you can see some of the worn ink particles have stuck to my brayer because that's gel medium it'll probably dry and won't activate but I'm just going to clean my brayer just in case so you can see we've got a lot more sort of darker colour on there and it's just giving it a little bit of something else so I'll set that aside now I clean my brayer quite often on a baby wipe but I do keep these because you can actually make twine out of them I keep trying to find the link of the original Pinterest post where I found out how to do twine so that I can share it with everybody. But the link seems to have vanished. So we've got a speckled area there. We'll just clean my glass mat by brayering over the baby wipe on top of the gel medium. Gel medium is a little difficult to get off your glass mat. It's not as easy to wipe off, off as gesso. Right, I love this area on my brayer. Right, 
so I'll dry this and then we'll see where we go from there. All right, so you can see this is completely dry again. Um, I'm going to add a bit more interest before I add some more paint. Um, I've chosen these two paints because I think they will just lift it and add a little bit. I did wonder about Cerulean, but I think it's maybe just a little bit too far, just a little bit poppy. Um, I'll see, but I quite like waterfall and heavy cream, which are just bringing it up a little bit. But first I'm going to add some stamping. So I've got my stays on Jetback ink pad and this is a stamp from Seth Apter, um, ESA 27 Eclectica from Paper Arts. See, it's this one here. It's one of my favourite ones. Um, I love lines and circles. So I'm just going to turn it into a portrait orientation, pick up some of the stays on ink and I'm going to work from the edges and I might not always get a lot from the stamp but that's fine, that's what I want. I want just sort of little bits here and there that just add interest and visual texture. Turn it round. As you can see, it just adds a little bit of something, adds interest. It brings your eyes in from the edges. Now somewhere on here, there's a little block, and I absolutely love that. So I'm going to put that there. And where I have pale areas so that it will show up. There we are. Now I think that's enough. Maybe a little bit at the top there. And as you can see, the lines always go the same way. You can do your own thing. Some people like them crossing. Some people like them just one way. For this, I think I just want it one way. So we'll pop the stairs on away. Pop the stamp away. Just clean this off and then I don't pick it up in the paint. Alright. I really, really like that. And I actually don't mind which way around it is. I like both. Back to my brayer. And I think we'll start with this one, which is Waterfall. Now I only want a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. So we'll just get a little bit on our glass mat. Do as before and pick it up on our brayer. And I'm going to go the same way as the lines. And as you can see, we're not getting a lot, but I don't want a lot. I just want the odd little bit here and there. I love messy backgrounds, sort of painterly backgrounds as I call them. We can always go back and add more if we want. It does dry incredibly quickly, does um, Paper Artsy Paint, when it's warm. We've had the heating on today because it's so cold. Always shake the bottles because sometimes the pigment does separate. And again, just a little bit along. Brayer again. Brayer it out. And we get areas. And I think this time I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to go top to bottom. And I will go that way as well. I've got this very annoying line. It's the edge of my brayer, it's very worn. So I'm going to get a little bit of my foam, dab it into the ink and then just 
go over where the lineys are annoying me just to disguise it a little. It's still there but it's not quite as obvious as it was. I don't think we've got anything left on our brayer but we'll go just in case. Around the edges. That's it. There we are. Now it's very messy, it's very muddled, but you can still see things peeking through like this area that I loved on the second layer. The stamping is partly underneath and some of it's still showing through. But that's what I love, is the little things that peek through. So I'm probably going to add some more stamping and then I will use it as a journal page background. It's quite an icy sort of weathered icy sort of look so it might look quite nice with some icicles or something on I might put some grunge paste icicles which would look very pretty uh, we'll see where we go from here all right so we're back and we're on the second background sheet now I've still got the stamp from Seth, Seth Apter but I've also got a little one from this set, which is Alison Bomber, AOB10, a Eclectica, um, Friends and Friendship. And this says, let me find it, the only way to have a friend is to be one, Ralph Waldo Emerson. And I didn't choose it for the words, I chose it for the size of the stamp the fact that it was text and the fact that I'm going to add it in various places. This time, because this is a nice pale background and I think I'm going to go down the pale route, I've got this archival link in Hickory Smoke and I'm going to use that because it gives almost like a second generation look to the stamping. Uh, so I'll start with the Seth Apter one. I do freel style stamping, I don't put it on a block very often. I aren't using stays on this time because most of the time I'm going to be going into areas where there's no mediums on it. It's just plain paper. And can you see it's filling in, hopefully you'll be able to see, it's filling in the gaps where there is just white space. I still want the white space but I want a little bit of interest in it so it doesn't look as if I've I've missed out on the, the stamping. Up the top there. And it, it tones very very nicely with the the blues of the fusions. There we are. So I think we'll start with that one and we'll nice now start with the text. Make sure I've got it the right way up. I think I'll probably use the paper this way. So I'm going to go this way. And as you can see, I'm just not always even using the whole stamp. I'm just using part of it just to put the text in there. I love text on things and numbers as well. Absolutely door numbers. I was very good at maths at school and I, I, I love them. I won't go too mad, I think we'll stop soon. Maybe have a little bit up there, that's a bit of a blank area. And I'm just adding interest where I think it needs it. And I think it just takes it up from being a page where there's a lot of white space that's very boring and looks as if it needs something just into an interesting page all over. So I'm going to stop with that. I also think I need to add an edge to it. So I've got a foam, it's a makeup sponge and I'm just going to go around the edges with the archival ink. Now it may be that I cut this down 
to um, use it in a journal or ATCs or whatever. But at the moment, I think it just needs, as a background, it just needs an edge. And if I cut it down, I can always add the edge everywhere else after it's cut down. And I'll go across the corners a fair bit. So that is another very nice background. That one hasn't got the um, gel medium on it, but I think it's fine without. It's a lot paler, but still interesting in its own way. And it will probably have a lot lighter focal point when I use it. It may be ATCs, it could be anything. Um, just wondering if I should use a little bit of this just to give it a bit of zing. It's very tempting, but I don't know. Go on, we can always give it a go. I'll just pop a few things out of the way. Move my stamps. And we'll have a very small amount of this, I think. I haven't shaken it up. Spread it on my glass mat with my finger. And then we'll just pick up a little bit. And just, it dries very fast, so we might not get very much at all. Oh yeah, I'm getting a bit. Thing. Whenever I think that's the last layer, I look and I think, no, we can go one more. So I think we'll now go with the heavy cream as well. Seeing as we've gone with the uh, cerulean, we'll go heavy cream as well. Can always add some more stamping on the top. Ray's doing its usual thing of coming to pieces. Still got the pale look, and I think we need a bit more stamping, but I think we're nearly there. stamping and I think we'll go black. I'm going to use archival because I don't mind if it doesn't stick in some places and we'll go with the lines again just to reinforce what we've already got. Yes I like the black against the, the pale Just about going with instinct really, what you think is going to look good. You can always try it. As some fam somebody famously said, it's only paper and paint. It's not life or death. I think that's it. I think that's done. I'm going to step away before I ruin it, which I do do sometimes. So that's the second one and the first one. I would count this as a darker background and this as a paler. As much as it's got the black 
overall it looks pale and this overall looks darker so I would I would say they're two backgrounds for the price of one right so we're back I've used the second sheet the, the sheet that I pressed onto the top of the original sheet to create four ATCs uh, because it was A5, I could only get four out, but I have got some nice little scraps left over if I want to use them for anything else. Um, I didn't do a great deal of complicated things. I just stamped with the um, quote that I'd used in the background before in grey, uh, which says, the only way to have a friend is to be one. I just stamped that on all four. I found a little bit of very ragged vintage lace. Um, I don't think it's hand made lace, I think it is just machine lace. Uh, I wouldn't use hand made lace like this. Uh, but it was very ripped. But I actually like the cobwebby effect, a quite fragile ethereal effect of it. Um, especially at the ends where it was very ripped. So there's a little bit of those, of that, on each one, just underneath the main cluster. It's very, very, only just there. You, can, you can't quite see it. It fades into the background. But as it comes over the edges, you get some nice wispy bits. Um, I've used just some cotton thread uh, in sort of a teal colour. Um, I just got a bundle and put it on. I've punched out little hearts just from a scrap piece of paper. This was off um, an old paper pad and I've just punched little hearts out of a coordinating colour, inked the edges and put those on. I used my little tiny stapler that <laughs> my mum's had this for years and she's given me she wasn't using it so she gave me it and it's absolutely brilliant because it does I don't know if you can see the tiniest little staples so once I'd got the heart on there the thread and the lace I did actually attach them just with staples uh, there's a staple underneath here and two there and one just to attach the lace the top little embellishment is actually a vintage mother of pearl sequin. I've got a nice little stash of these. I think these also came from mum. Um, and they're a lovely iridescent colour. Um, there's greens and blues and pinks and they went really well with the colours in the backgrounds. And I also thought this background had an almost like a seaside-y um, colour way to it. So I thought those would be great because they are actually made out of shell. So I stuck those on with the heavy gel medium. The finishing touch was just one of these uh, index clips on each, which are from Tim Holtz. Um, the, I don't know how many is, 24 pieces in a, in a pack. So I've just popped those onto the top. I've backed them with some coordinating paper because they were a bit untidy on the back with the staples and everything. So I've just backed them and then I'll write on the back the date, uh, the title and sort of um, one of four, two of four, etc. So I hope you like those. Um, and I hope you give it a go and use all these wonderful products just to create backgrounds. I thought I'd show you a journal page that I created with the original sheet, the bottom sheet. Um, it, as you, If you can remember, it was a little bit darker, more dense, not as light as the one that I created the ATCs from. Um, so I've... I've basically taken the idea of the ATCs and transferred it onto a journal page. I've got the nice wispy lace with the little threads at the end, the turquoise thread. This little heart was just um, 
a, wa a piece of waste paper that I'd mixed some of the um, Black Knight infusions with the heavy gel medium uh, just to see what it looked like and I'd put it onto a, a scrap piece of, of card which was this and then when it was dry I, I punched it out uh, so that is a, a little bit more of a contrast to the background than the ATCs because they were quite light uh, and then I've put the two index clips and the pearl mother of pearl sequin vintage sequin and I've stamped up here the quote so that it, it's a companion to the ATCs basically um, once I'd stamped the quote there I decided I didn't want to waste the ink on the stamp so I just did second generation and third generation stamping around the page to use the ink up but it also echoes the the quote and it looks quite nice in the background because we had the original grey uh, in the background so I'll call it a day with that and I hope you like it